Good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Happy pre-CPI Tuesday. Remember, tomorrow is <laughs> tomorrow's the big one. It's already here. We're already uh, on the eve of CPI here. So happy Tuesday, everybody. Another slow, small news day. If you're here with me, either in the Discord or in the YouTube chat, go ahead and say what's up. Let's see who's with us. We have Dude, David, Retberg, Vibe Trade, Grateful Trader, Cyrus, Dustin, GMC, Dave, Retberg, Darren, Double A, J. Patrick, Marnow, Midland Trader, Mel, Chris, Shady Lady, O'Keefe, Georgia Dog, John, Mixter, David, Alfrey, Marcello, GW. Good morning, good morning. David, Astro, Nerd, Panchua, Luna, Ken Co, Silent, NW, Zion, Cyrus, RTR, Raiden, uh, or Raiden. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Captain Jim, Benji, Capcana. Good morning, Chem Dog DV8. Uh, by the way, uh, who was it? I had a DM with. Who was that? Let me see here. Silent NW. I, I sent a DM to you. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Arlim O'Keefe. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> there you go. Uh, good morning, everybody here. Uh, good morning, Trader Page. Looking like we had some folks. Uh, good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Futures Trading. Today, we had a lot of folks trading early this morning because the price action was just crazy town. Look at this. We had some crazy price action here. Good morning, Julio, Charles, Jose, Enzo. Good morning, Talk Talk. Good morning, Richard, David. Good morning, Juan, Donnie, Robert, P. Balders for Zoo Wealth, Naversty, Trade for Pay, TAA, Marco, Dominic, Down Jam, Speedy, Cognitively Healing, J. Rodriguez, or G. Rodriguez, Crazy Mind, Igor, Joe, My Star, Future, Mamba, Futures Frank, Marcello, Carl, Q. Mendez, John, Racer Joe, Trendy, Jet. Good morning, good morning. Uh, how's everybody doing out there? So yeah, this was the uh, the price action. I'm going to drop it down into the two minute just so we can see this a little bit more dialed in. But you had two big sweeps of liquidity here. This one was deep in the Globex session. And then this one was kind of when everybody was waking up uh, those early risers on the East Coast and everybody who was finishing their uh, their Globex trades, overnight trades. But we it was very active in the clubhouse overnight. We had a lot of folks that were trading. Big opportunities too. On either side, you know, if you, you like to short the market, you had shorts here, you had this long extension and then you had this huge reversal here. I mean, right off the, the level to level here, right off that rejection, back up into this level right here. Just, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous price action and just crazy, crazy movement. And it might be the biggest move. I think this might be the biggest move on the entire day. And why would you ask? Well, because we don't really have much news again today. The big news events of this week, as I said at the top of the call, are going to be CPI tomorrow on Wednesday. And then we have PPI following that. But CPI is going to be the, the big news of the week, really. We did have the uh, short-term consumer inflation expectation out yesterday. And I do have some notes about that release. There are some interesting data points to take home with that. Uh, but, you know, not... Not anything that's going to be moving the market like CPI there. Uh, did anybody trade any of this price action? Because, I mean, look at this on Bookmap even. I mean, this was just an extreme, extreme move here. This crazy, crazy move to the downside here. And crazy move back up to the upside. Looks like David in here. How much you... Uh, wow, congratulations there, David. That's awesome. Let me ask you, David. Uh, David here in the Discord up. Looks like... <laughs> Is that realized 2,800, unrealized 3,100? My goodness, that's unbelievable. In his XFA, he's trading a 50K express funded account. His current balance on this thing is almost $11,000. Unbelievable work there, David. Let me ask you, David, has, have you gotten an email yet from Mick saying that they're watching your trading and they're, they're, liking, uh, <laughs> they're liking what they're seeing? Any, any emails from the risk management team over at Top Step? I would, I would assume that they're... Uh, yeah, I'm that 500 point move down day. Okay, cool. So they're obviously looking at your trading because you're killing it in here. I've been seeing you uh, crushing it nonstop. So congratulations to you, David. Really in the pocket. Been seeing some amazing, amazing, amazing trading there. Four to one reward to risk. Very, very nice. 21% win rate. So that says it all right there. He's trading a four to one uh, reward to risk ratio there. And just incredible. So Ah, good morning to you, David. A great morning to you. Love to see that there. I myself obviously haven't taken any trades yet, uh, but we will see if we're if there's any price action for us to be trading here. Um, but yeah, so back to the uh, back to the charts here. 
Um, we are seeing this pushing up. We've had this triple topping area, well, quadruple, quintuple topping area. You can see, if we go back into the 15 minute here, you can see this dotted red line. We've been kind of rejecting price in this area. We have swept liquidity above it a few times here. You know, this one here and then these, of course. And then we've kind of held that point of it as a, uh, a rejection here. You can see that we have a clear triple top until we broke above it just now, really. And so we'll have to see whether or not that can hold. We really want to see whether or not it can hold the, the uh, price above that level there. And uh, the next level that we'd want to see that auctioning back up to would be all the way up at 365 quarters, which if you do remember yesterday, that's sort of the level that rejected in the early session yesterday. So we'll have to see if that kind of uh, continues this range bound trade. It's a pretty wide range, but we are just kind of ping ponging around that range right now. So let's see if this area kind of holds as a stop of that level of liquidity to the top side. There's a lot of resting liquidity that we've had that's been sold. You can see here at the tippy top of that range here, here, and it's just been being sold off, sold off quite aggressively. So without anything out to really support the market to push up, outside of positioning ahead of CPI, we really probably will not see that breakout unless we have, again, some folks that have an early read on that CPI or somebody has some information that isn't publicly available. We could see some big institutional traders pushing that up. You have to remember when we are in a tight range like this, there's going to be liquidity on either side of this. There's going to be liquidity below, liquidity above, and uh, you know, if we do have continuation, we do have squeezing, we have gathered enough liquidity here in these sweeps of liquidity, well then there's a good chance that we could visit above 365 quarters and potentially go all the way back to 407 quarters. But to get above that is gonna take a whole mess of liquidity. And if we don't have that, I mean, we're talking about getting back up into these levels before that huge dump that we had, um, that 500 point down day that David was trading in here. Uh, if we do have the liquidity to push up to that, we wouldn't most likely see a rejection up here uh, in those 534s. And again, above 500, it's gonna take a lot of liquidity for us to get up there. And I'm just not so sure if we could do that on a day like today. So the safest trade is to look at these bands of liquidity and look at where we were rejecting. So if we were rejecting at 365 quarters, you know, if we do see a lot of volume going into that and there's not a lot of sellers capping off in it, then looking at that 407 quarters, that's likely where we're gonna see a lot of sell side liquidity coming in. So we'll have to see here. Um, so yesterday we did have the short-term consumer expectation. By the way, if you are enjoying these streams regularly, you can show support by hitting that like button. I'd love to do a giveaway. I wanna give away a free combine today at 1200 likes. We should be able to do that on a Tuesday. So if we get to 1200 likes, I'm gonna be giving away a free top step combine. Uh, but we did have short-term consumer expectations out yesterday. Um, they are kind of looking low. The one-year expectation has been at 3%. It's remaining at 3% for inflation right now, which is the lowest expectation that we've seen since January of 2021. So it is keeping pace there. The one-year ahead rate is approaching that pre-2020 series average of 2.6% which is established since the survey's expectation. They started doing this survey in 2014 and historical rates were never exceeding 3% between 2014 and 2021. So we're back kind of in that range betwixt 2014 and 2021, which is 2.8% all the way up to 3%. The three year ahead inflation expectation increased from 2.7% to 2.9%. So 20 basis points hotter, which is kind of what we saw yesterday, the reaction on this print. This was kind of the only notable thing. Didn't really move the market all that much, but it was the only notable newsprint. And it is good information to carry into CPI with us. So going up 20 basis points there in the three year look, at, uh, look ahead in the inflation expectation, that is the pre-2020 average. Um, the five year ahead inflation expectation decreased to 2.6 from 2.9. So the five year is down, the three year is up, and that is staying within the series historical range of two to 3% since its introduction in 2022. The one year ahead expected home price increase remained at 3%. The uh, survey uh, participants for the entire survey uh, had a higher year ahead increase for food, gas, rent, and medical costs. 
So all of those are trending up right now. The expected earnings growth for next year held steady at 2.8%, so no growth there in earnings growth. Um, the labor market expectations showed mixed results and the fear of missing debt payments, this is one that stood out to me, is the highest level that we've seen in the last four years. So since 2020, this is the big gauge here on fear for people who are worried about missing their debt payments. But the outlook on personal finance saw a slight improvement in the March read, which was interesting. So you have consumers that are worried about missing their debt repayments, but also saying that they have a strong outlook on their personal finances. So you have to wonder, you know, that that to me seems a sort of off, off the beaten path type of print where if you have folks that are worried about missing their debt repayments, you would probably think that their personal finances would uh, be decreasing, not improving. So the outlook on personal finances going up, uh, debt repayment fears going up uh, doesn't really seem congruent. So I'm really going to be looking out for this uh, CPI print tomorrow. But on today's docket, we do have some news. It's not like yesterday. Yesterday was very vacant of any news releases. Uh, we do have Redbook retail sales that are going to be out in the pre-market. Outside of that, we do have the TIPP economic optimism read. That's going to be out at 10 a.m. today. So 30 minutes after the open. We are pushing up here, by the way. Starting to see a lot of squeeze now above this level. It's looking like we're just going to jettison right to that 365 area. I still haven't taken a trade myself here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, looking somewhat squeezy. I'm seeing if there's uh, anything that's pushing this up right now, seeing Microsoft, Google, Meta kind of trending to the north side here. I'd like to see what happens up here at 365 quarters. Go back over to the trading screen here. I'd like to see uh, if we have a rejection into that area that we could potentially short into, or if we can board this rocket ship for a cresting push all the way up to these 81s. <laughs> yeah, Red Book who? Exactly. Nobody cares about the Red Book retail sales. There was a time when it actually moved the market, but 855 will come and go with out much fanfare, I presume. Hit that NQ for my 50K combine. Hit my $1,500 top, uh, take profit. Nice there, Kenny. Halfway home. Is that uh, what you're working with on that 50K combine? Just one more, uh, one more strong day. Sounds like you'll pass it. The Fishing Pharaoh says, I love the lockup feature. Did not want to trade today, so I locked it up because I always say I don't want to trade, and then I trade and lose. There you go. That's that's one of the great benefits of that. Seconds Beauty, XFA, trade today, trade today, letting one run again. Very, very nice, sir. Grateful trader. Well done. Yeah, we are pushing up there. 365 quarters. I want to see if we have any level of pullback here, any kind of rejection that we could potentially trade into here. This is kind of the tippy top of this area of rejection that we've seen lately. But we are seeing uh, S&Ps are, again, we're, we're right at that level there where S&Ps could be very, very strong if we have a breakout. Google's pushing up tremendously hard. Google's been really, really strong lately out of um, a lot of these names. We're seeing more and more headlines related to the AI space and Google uh, talk about their Gemini product, which by the way, isn't so bad lately. Uh, they renamed Bard to Gemini, and Gemini's been really uh, actually improving quite a bit here. They're using a lot of the, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. They're using all the information that people are searching for and have in their emails, and a lot of kind of breach of privacy, in my opinion, but hey, it's working. It's working out really, really well. What time will you be on Top Step TV? I'm gonna go over there at about 9.15 or so Eastern time. So S&Ps are spiking up here, 67. We're trading 52.67 here. Seeing if we have uh, any kind of slight pullback here. Seeing if we could potentially get a cheaper short up here. I'm seeing if we get back up to 65s and it starts to reject. So I'm watching here. I'd like to look for kind of quick little scalp here to the downside. Looking for those 60s to break, get this up to 71 quarters, so it's a cheaper trade. VIX is up about a quarter of a percent right now too, which is interesting, because it was up uh, a little bit more earlier in the pre-market there. 
Watch and see if we have sort of a double top here. I still like where my stop is at at 71. Seeing if we have a little pullback that I can add in a second lot into. If not, we'll get stopped out here. There's some liquidity up there at 69 through 71. So we would get stopped out if they want to sweep that liquidity and then potentially uh, reassess if I want to put on another short here. But we could easily sweep this liquidity up towards that 71 watching here if we're going to fail 65 quarters again. Seeing a little bit of exhaustion there in the S&Ps. Just a little bit. Yeah, this is kind of that cresting area. So we have bid support kind of waning here. And I'd want to see this trading back down through the 60s and potentially adding heavily into that targeting uh, roughly around 45 or so. so. Watching here if we have this rejection. Looking for that 65 quarters level to give out here. I'm going to go second lot right there. Seeing if we can uh, get that breach to the downside. Are you a buy or sell? So you can always tell right above my head. If the number is red, that means I'm short. If it's green, it means I'm long. That's how you can always tell. And the number to the right of that is my average cost. So I'm in two lots short with an average of 63 quarters here. That is the position that I have on. I think the stop should be good there at 71 because if I it does pull me out, then it gives me a chance, a second opportunity to get into this trade. If we are kind of exhausting here, just might be a little bit early to the short, but let's see. Uh, name Gemini was popular for many companies. I worked as a software projects internally. Only Google took it public. Uh, Gemini also a big crypto exchange that is the uh, the Winklevi twins. <laughs> that is their exchange. <laughs> also another public Gemini name there. <laughs> Google just stole the name. Yeah, I'm actually surprised how much better it is than Bard since they rebranded it. Actually quite good compared to what Bard was and it's I was an early beta tester for Bard and it was really bad. <laughs> So we're still seeing some bid support here down towards 64, 63, which I don't like for a short position here. If we do start to crack that and then we'll start to entertain whether or not we can break through this resting liquidity at 60s. Seeing some sell side volume coming in here, which is nice. But you can see a eh, decent sized bid there, about 60 lots on the bid. Seeing how many, uh, what if we have icebergs down there at 60 as well, the, the bid just got removed at 60, got moved to 60 and a half. If we actually break through that here, it could be a nice tumble targeting again, 45s here to the downside. So coming down here, Powell just printed another trillion by forever. <laughs> Yeah, do we you have any, uh, We uh, sorry, we don't have any uh, Fed speakers today. We do have some Fed speakers tomorrow. We have Bowman, who's a voter, Michelle Bowman. And then we have uh, Goolsby, who's a non-voter. He's going to be speaking. They're both speaking during market hours. Um, Michelle Bowman's in the pre-market. She's going to be speaking 15 minutes after we get the CPI print tomorrow, which will be uh, some interesting dynamics there, in my opinion. Just watching to see how they're uh, adding liquidity here to the top side. They're making the bid very, very thin, which again, kind of as, as good as that sounds for our position, it doesn't give me a lot of solace in this because usually when you see the market makers retracting from the bid, they're trying to get a quick little lower price that they can heavily bid into. So I do want to see this cracking those 60s. I'm not trusting this for a third lot yet. I'm not seeing what I want to see on the tape for a third lot being added short here. What did you see to short ES? Um, nothing because we're we're trading NQ over here. You can see right here, NQ is what we're trading here. 
But we're using our levels for confluence, the 65 quarters there. There's that crack of 60, very nice. Let's see if we have any kind of rejection back into those 60s. Very, very nice there. Yeah, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous fade right there. We're gonna get paid on one contract right here. So taking off one there. Anybody else see that same trade like I saw it there? I think that was a pretty nice setup. So we have realized some profit there. Nice exhaustion right at our MC level. This is why I love using our MC levels for confluence. We talked about this at the top of the call. Is it gonna win every time? Nah, of course not. Uh, but it was worth a two lot position for me, worth a two lot to trade. And this is why these levels have just been so fantastic. And now we're guaranteed to lock in, you know, about $200 worth of profit on this trade per account. Which will be a nice little start to our morning here before we go on Top Step TV. Pedro says, trading my first XFA today up 480. Thanks for the stream rips. Nice, Pedro. Give it up for Pedro, making it happen in their XFA. I also have Grateful Trader in here up $921 on their XFA. Nice work there. Those levels, pivot levels? No, they're MC levels, um, market clubhouse levels. We post them every single morning into the morning memo. I post it daily here in the clubhouse. So breaking down below those 50s there. Thank you, Ripacito. Join the <laughs> nice work there, DM. <laughs> Made 7.2K while I slept on 50K challenge. I need to get rid of 6K. You know, you can really easily do that, Gert, just by clicking buy market, sell market in rapid succession. And if you need to do it a little bit quicker, you can do it with more lots. So that's what I would do if I were in your short, your your shoes, <laughs> not your shorts. <laughs> In your shoes, that's what I would be doing there. How it's called your haircut. Um, I mean, very carefully, usually. Usually very, very carefully, we call it. Your Rips, you have a For Life membership. Um, I mean, we do half yearly or yearly. That's the longest term that we do it. But uh, <laughs> I'm walking around in other people's short. Yeah, total... Uh, <laughs> Uh, in Market Clubhouse, do you go into detail of the reason you chose your levels? Never, and I never will. Uh, it's a proprietary formula that I developed over the years, and I will never, ever discuss how that formula is derived. I do lean into it a little bit. The, I do drop some hints, but best of luck for anybody who wants to come up with that. <laughs> what time will I be on Top Step TV? It's going to be uh, 9.15 Eastern time. Ryan passed my first comment. Whoa, let's go. It's so cool. We, we actually had, um, I posted it on my Instagram because I'm so, like, it just, nothing makes me happier than this. But we had two people that got their first payout yesterday, which was, like, it's the coolest thing ever to be a part of people's journeys like that and just seeing, like, these two individuals put in so much work and they've been literally just working super hard at this and seeing them get their first payouts is just like, it's the coolest thing in the world to to be in like a front row seat to that, like a front row ticket to seeing people crush it like that is one of the coolest things. And just made me really, really happy to see that. So two people yesterday posted an MC taking their very first payouts ever. So freaking awesome. Just so happy about that. Nicholas says, got woken up by fire alarm at 6 a.m. Shorted the market for push down at 6.30 to pass combine, right place, right time. There you go. Uh, sometimes there's divine intervention. <laughs> uh, let me ask you, when that fire alarm woke you up at 6 a.m., did you get a free reset? I'm curious. Did uh, the They did. Okay, good. Awesome. <laughs> there's some people who post levels on Twitter, probably not as in sync as Rips, but one, oh, yeah, I don't know who that is. Apex funded account up 1.6K today. Nice work there, Jonas. Got a combine pass, I'll take it. Oh, we got stopped out there. So that's gonna put us up on the day to start our day here. We're up $893 to start our day there on that nice little short to the downside. Very, very cool. Any updates on the 10 XFAs? No updates. Uh, no updates, uh, but MP should be on Top Step TV with me today, I would assume. But 
We'll see. I think, I mean, he, anytime I talk to him about it, he just says, you know, it's in the works. It's coming. It's something that's coming here. So the only thing I would have changed differently here on this, and I was watching it as I was pushing back up. The only thing I would have done would be run it to above that wick. And it looks like, eh, you know, two ticks above that wick wouldn't have got stopped out. So that's the only thing I could have ran differently there was running that two ticks higher. Hey, Rips, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Fixman, for asking. Why is Andre's face on the side of my milk cart? <laughs> He's going to be on today. He's, uh, I, I heard Eddie Horn talking about it on the uh, close yesterday. He is going to be on, apparently. That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the word on the streets, at least. I need the micros to minis conversion. Yes, it's coming. It's, that's one of the things that, I mean, the tentative date was like April 15th. So it's got to be right around the corner. Uh, but, and that's for you, Luna, and uh, which I mean, rips any word using more than five. Yeah, that's for you, X-Blade as well. So anybody still in this short? This is looking killer. Uh, he'll be on as per usual, but he won't be trading. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll have the, uh, the question was, Rips, when you're on Top Step, are you still on Discord? I am. I, I actually have the, the differences is that, so I'm, I'm live on Top Step TV, but there's a six second delay, but I'm here in the Discord where I stream it real time and you see my screen and everything real time. And I guess the benefit of that is that, you know, when they're not showing my screen on Top Step TV and I'm taking trades, um, it's a lot better too that I'm not appearing on tops of TV as much because it's it was a, it was a lot, and so I feel like you know trading is a little bit better now, at least in my opinion. Rips trying to do trades for my refrigerator. <laughs> Were you there in Dakota's stream? I asked him. <laughs> he was talking about trading on your phone, and I asked him uh, what was the best app to use on your smart fridge to trade. <laughs> Puerto Rico in the house. What's up, Chino? How you doing? Good morning. When the uh, uh, can pass combines in two days with no problem, even the 150K account, XFAs are complete difference with free contracts. Yeah, I mean, if you're passing them in two days, you're probably pushing the gas pretty hard. So uh, if you're looking to coast in from your combines to your XFAs, uh, it's probably best to pump the brakes and take it a little bit easier and trade smaller size. I've had some uh, some mentorship sessions with some other folks who have had similar issues, and I think that the remedy for that is to find a way that you can coast into your trades versus uh, barreling into your trades. You know, coasting into the uh, the finish line of the XFA versus you know slamming it as hard as you possibly can. Uh, sorry, I was referring to Andre. That dude never takes a trade. Ah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. It's one of the reasons I rarely watch any more too much chit chat. Yeah, I mean, it's a great program, though. It's a great uh, it's great to have on in the background. There's some amazing guests that they have on from time to time. It's it's a great program. I, I think it's fantastic. Got to update the firmware for the fridge trading. I think absolutely, right? Is there any news today, Ask Futures Trading? We do have some news, so let me go over that. Uh, we do have the TIPP Economic Optimism that's out at 10. We do have a four and eight week bill announcement that's going to be out, uh, but it's an announcement. Uh, the big news, the biggest newsprint of the day is going to be a three-year note auction, and that's due out at 1 p.m. That is the biggest news all day long. We have Redbook retail sales that are gonna be out in about eh, 25 minutes from now, but outside of that, the uh, the economic optimism, we already saw a preview of that basically yesterday. It's gonna be more of the same, in my opinion. I don't think that there's gonna be anything in that print that can kind of change what people are expecting in CPI. I think that most market participants are gonna be waiting for that CPI print, which is going to be due out tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern in the morning, 7.30 Central. That's going to be what's moving the market here, folks. And and keep in mind, we do have Michelle Bowman, who's speaking 15 minutes after that print comes out. But today, that three-year note auction is really going to be the only thing. Can the three-year note auction move the market extraordinarily? Yes, absolutely, 100%. But I don't expect it to be too much of a move pre-CPI here. Uh, with the XFA, do you basically still get paid while waiting to be evaluated for full funding? Yeah, so the XFA is, I mean, you are funded when you're in the XFA level. Uh, the goal is not to get to the live funded level. I mean, I mean, essentially it is, but it's like, if you're trying to get payouts, I mean, you get payouts in the XFA. You're not waiting for anything. Any five days of $200 or more, not, um, 
not consecutive. If you have a day of $200 profit or more, it's counted towards your, your bank of days and you get any five days of $200 or more, you can take a withdrawal. So the XFA is the funded level. You're not really waiting for anything. Getting a lot of uh, press releases here at the bottom of the hour, more so than usual. Squawks are just going crazy, <laughs> going nuts here. Trading with XFA or combines, I'm in three combines right now. I always say, you know, whether or not I'm in combines or, I, I usually will will say, you know, I'm in, I'm trading this in, in, in XFA right now, but this is off of three combines right now. Just trading three combines and that's how we got to the uh, the profit of $893 there. So that's where we're sitting at so far. We are consolidating down here after we did get stopped out in the profit. How many accounts do you have in total? Um, what if I said that I had 238? And what if I said that I had 16? What if I said that I had 14? What does that do? <laughs> what's, what's the data point we're looking for there? Past combines, I probably have uh, now probably about 18. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have a live account and then I have three XFA. So in actual money that I can trade that's real money hitting the market, I have one live account, I have three XFA accounts, and then about 18 past XFAs. So there you go. Does not matter, just intrigue. Yeah, sure. Curious like a cat, right? Loomis says, I got my first XFA three weeks ago. Since then, it's been removed three times. Remember when they had issue on tops of X and refunded the losing trade? It's messed up my drawdown. No matter if I win or lose on a day, it says I blew the account. Support always makes it right, but it takes one to two days to come back. It's getting annoying. See if they can uh, put you on a different platform instead of, I mean, that's weird. That's a, that's a strange glitch. That's a lot to go through as well. Uh, how do you pay tax on your income from the live account? 1099. Now I'm out from my last partial profit from NQ and NAS from the lowest point. Nice work there in NAS. Any other prop firm you like other than Top Step? I trade only on Top Step. I've traded on other prop firms, but I prefer the rules on Top Step. Thought once you're moved to live, you lose your XFAs. That is correct. They, they take the balance of your XFAs and you put it in your live. But if you're like me and you have a bunch of XFAs waiting in the wings, you can rotate in three more. And that's what I did. So I have three XFAs and a live account. You can always have three XFAs and a live account. And there is a rumor right now that we're going to be able to have more than three XFAs at a single time. Uh, when you're in the live account, do they consider you a professional and force you to pay professional data? Yeah, I pay 135 bucks a month. Uh, the red tape to get set up. I mean, it took about, I want to say three to five days to get it set up. It wasn't a big deal. And it's 135 bucks a month. I mean, completely nominal. <laughs> it's like, you know. It's, you're paying those professional fees for sure, but it's that's I don't really even think about it. Uh, I'm confused. I thought XFA is a live account. So it's a funded account, express funded account, but it's not actually live in the sense that your orders are hitting the market. That's for the live account. And there is no difference between the two for you other than the fact that in one, your orders are hitting the market and the other that they're not. Can you refuse live? I don't think so. I don't think that you can. But I mean... All of these things were, you know, if you're if you're getting to that point, things are going really, really well. It's like this kind of goes back to that same uh, conversation where it's like, boy, I would sure hate to win the lottery because I would have to pay so much on the tax for that. It's it would be such a shame. So, you know what? If I win the lottery, I'm going to tell them I don't even want it. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you're if you're doing really, really well, things are going to be going really, 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 really well. So, you know. When in live, do they allow you to increase contract size max drawdown? Yes. You work directly with the risk manager, Mick. And uh, I haven't traded my live account in like uh, a month. And right now my live account is set to $3,000 max daily loss with five contracts at the top limit. Um, I want to get that balance to be like a six-figure balance and then get my contract size probably to around 10 contract max, but then like a daily drawdown of like maybe 4,500 or... 5,500, but it's your world, right? You get to do whatever you want. We get to do anything in that account. It's a live account and you're working directly with the risk manager. I can text Mick right now and say, hey, uh, change my account to 25 contracts with a $50,000, $25,000 drawdown, daily drawdown. And he'd probably say, nah, <laughs> but uh, you know, 
Uh, how does StopSup make money on XFAs? Uh, well, there's a lot of failed challenges, but they also copy their best traders. So there's an algorithm that they run where they're copying their best traders. So if people are doing really, really well on their XFAs, they're tracking everybody's trades so they can copy their best traders and fade their worst traders. Uh, pushing every day is not a good sign for top steps since they are still hiring QA, which means they're not testing it enough. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you can't even get on top step X unless, you, unless you've been selected for their fire drill or their early beta. Uh, rips up, won't that be unprofitable for top step to pay for XFA payouts? No, we just answered that. It's uh, They're copying their best traders and they're fading the worst traders. Is the market stronger on the stronger or weaker side today? It's We're range bound pre-CPI. We're definitely range bound. Thought it was backwards in, in what sense there? Yeah, so we are uh, just kind of ranging between where we started to flush and where we started to bounce. Not looking like any kind of setup for me here. Their algo also makes them extremely profitable. Yeah, imagine if you ran the prop firm and you could see you could see the person that's sitting there and buying 100 resets in a day that is a complete trash trader. You could be fading that person. And if you had, you know, a group of 100 traders that are complete rock stars, you copy trade them. I mean, you're going to be doing really, really well. Are you Marco from Top Step Live? What happened if you don't mind me asking? I am not Marco. <laughs> I'm Rips. Nice to meet you. Uh, do you know if Top Step front run traders they copy or is that a clear no-no? I mean, <laughs> we have some good questions today. These are fantastic. <laughs> These are fantastic questions. <laughs> So what would happen? <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> Rips, could you ask them on top step if they could set something up so you could flatten trades on top step dashboard? They have a flattened channel in their Discord. They have a flattened trades channel in their Discord there. What color is Tuesday? Um, it depends. Is it, if you're taking the train, I believe it's 63. That will answer your question there, dude. Uh, Rips is the sky blue, and what would happen if it was green? I think we'd all get rich. <laughs> DBA. <laughs> oh, did you bleach your beard? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking a little bit different. <laughs> you saying no tax cut on the tops of payout, bro? <laughs> it's a 1099, so... Yeah, you should probably just trade in your own you trade in your own money because clearly that uh, the tax cut is the deal breaker there. <laughs> Rips, what brand is the straw you're using for your drink? <laughs> oh goodness, we had good questions yesterday. I feel like we had really good questions yesterday. What are we at on likes? Let's see if we can run a poll. Let's see here. <laughs> We're at 438. If we get to 500 likes, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely do a uh, a poll here for the NQ. <laughs> Does Celsius give me gains? Um, it depends. Uh, usually, only that I think it applies on Wednesdays. I'm not sure if they still have that promotion on Thursdays. But if you drink Celsius on Wednesdays, I'm pretty sure. Uh, after, yeah. So if you drink after noon, they give you the gains on Thursday. But if you drink before noon on Wednesday, your gains are locked in for Wednesday. That is how that works. Rips, you advise for a second stage. <laughs> We're trying to get loopy rips going here. Uh, <laughs> when, <laughs> Hi, people. Test is seven dollars for a week. Welcome, Lenoxy. There we go. Welcome, welcome. Come on down <laughs> to the party. Make sure you're watching the Discord stream because there's no lag on the Discord stream. <laughs> My laughs are starting to sound like Anne Marie. I hope that she doesn't have as deep of a voice as I do. Can you share your computer specs? I have a uh, 14900K or maybe a 13900K, but uh, 64 gigs DDR5, an RTX 4090, and I have the three screens that I always post on Instagram that are the, uh, I have a 57 inch ultra wide and then a 49 inch ultra wide and a 32 inch over here. <laughs> Forex Trade says, I'm about to short. Good luck to you. 
Hope you crush it. <laughs> uh, Rip sounds like a product channel on Amazon is in your future. <laughs> I've actually, I saw that for the first time. I was browsing on Amazon, I think yesterday or no, not yesterday. It was like last week. And it was like on the homepage and I clicked on it. It was just one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. It was like the home shopping network on, on Amazon. It's kind of weird. <laughs> totally unexpected. And I clicked it and I started watching it and I said, what is, what is that? <laughs> Rose, what's the lag here? So I have it set to super ultra low latency on YouTube, but there's a, it's about a one second lag. The greatest way that you could tell is right here. This is the actual market time right down here. So it's 840 and 51 seconds. So, if, and this is Eastern time. So if you look at your own clock, you can see how much delay you're getting. This is the current time right here. So sync that up, make sure you're watching the video at 2X speed so it catches up all the way. And then you can see how much lag is there. Some folks like, there's somebody who said they're from Estonia and they have less than a uh, one second lag. Uh, and then some people are like, oh, I'm in, you know, I'm in New Jersey and I have a five second lag. Uh, but if you're in the Discord, there's there's little to zero lag. I mean, it's pretty close to real time. But I try to, I try to do real time here on YouTube. It's really not up to me. We did get uh, 537 likes. Let's do a poll here. Will the NQ end the day up or down? Uh, right now it is up 0.37%. Up, down. All right, there we go. Poll is up. Go ahead and vote away there. <laughs> Big G ski rips. I know you can't trade for me, but would your cats? <laughs> What'd you think of uh, what you saw? One of the boys there, Ari Cat. What'd you think of one of the boys? I I brought one of the boys on stream. I think that was last week, Friday. You missed it. Oh, <laughs> you were looking away. Oh, come on. <laughs> Zero latency for Alec, four seconds in Canada, Germany, three seconds, Brazil, five seconds, UK, eight seconds. Wow. Three seconds in Hong Kong. It's weird. It's so weird because it's like, you know, the way that YouTube works is they distribute amongst servers all across the world and they have, um, they have redundancy and sometimes you're connected to the redundancy server versus the, the main server. So it can all kind of vary there. All right. We are pushing back up here. 370s are trading, so we had a nice little pullback. I didn't trade any of the uh, the long side here. We are pulling back up. We're making a new high on the hourly here. We're about 13 minutes away from the Red Book retail sales. Remember, folks, there's about 1,800 of you folks in here watching. If we get this to 1,200 likes, I'm going to give away a Top Step Combine, which we are limited on our time here because we are going to be skittering on over to Top Step TV. Today is the one day out of the week that I will be on Top Step TV. Third winner in XFA trying to let it run. Nice work there, Grateful Trader. Way to go. North Korea, 0.5 seconds. Nice. Kim Jong-un hooking up with the uh, lightning fast internet there. Rip short again. Uh, I'm not, not so sure if I like it, uh, given the fact that we didn't reject all the way down to 45s. People were bidding up those 50s. But if you caught that short right away, I mean, for a little scalp there from 70s down to 64s, it's a nice six-point banger there. Any way to sync Windows clock to Ninja Traders? Um, yeah, there's a setting in there where you can, uh, it's adjust date and time, and then it's like set time automatically, and then you can sync it to their servers. Yeah, there, you click sync now in Windows 11. And if you sync it, it should be all kind of lined up there. Let's see. Yeah, mine's all synced up. Two second lag in Belgium, there you go, Sam. Discord is only with subscription. Uh, well, so check this out. There's a link I'm gonna post right here. The whole deal is that we do a seven day trial. So you can come check it out for seven days. And in those seven days, you're gonna figure out if it's a good community for your style of trading. Um, and that's the reason why we do a seven day trial. So it's practically free for the seven days. So if you wanna just come check it out for the seven days. And by the way, you can join for those seven days and cancel immediately and you'll still get the seven days, which I recommend doing. Um, come in, just check it out for seven days. See if it improves uh, your your overall attitude on trading. And that's that's what I would recommend there. Am I more of a trend trader or reversal trader? Um, I wouldn't say that I favor either strategy more one more than the other. Um, I do like the reflex strategy, which is reversals. I do like trending trades where we trail our stop behind the trade and it keeps on moving. That's kind of what we're trying to do here on this short 
you know, we were we were short from the consolidation. We were correct on the move. We covered first into that flush into the first curve fuffle right there. And then we put our stop right here. Uh, thankfully, we had a stop in play that wasn't back at break even. So we realized even more profit. And that's why we're up, you know, almost 900 bucks to start the day there. I'll be joining the trial today. Oh, looking forward to having you, Todd. Be awesome. Zero second here in your basement. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, never watched a guy read the order full like reps. He can tell the future. I have a crystal ball here. <laughs> discretionary. Yeah, I would say I'm, I'm a discretionary trader, but that's not to say that, you know, I'm I'm very keen on setups as well. And and that's a lot of the what we talk about here in in Clubhouse. And I've had this one on one conversation with uh, one of our traders in here and they messaged me this morning. And let's see here. They said, Max gain on a 50k combine first time that ever happens to me. This is totally due to you. Thank you so much for your help and the support is a huge help to me. And that was like the first message that I woke up to today. And that was from somebody who's not a discretionary trader because I think they've been trading for about four or five years and they, uh, they've been having a little bit of, they've been wanting to work on their trading and we've just been going over, let's just take these setups. Let's just take these setups. And that's not discretionary at all. That's more systematic. And for a lot of traders, that can be extremely helpful because you know, if you don't have a discretionary trading skill, which you develop, you can't force that. There's nothing you're gonna read in a book to become a better discretionary trader. The only thing you're gonna be able to do is to put in screen time. You have to put in screen time. And this is one of those people who, they've been working really, really hard. And the people who work really, really hard at this, they're gonna see the results the fastest. And this person's been very, very dedicated. We've been keeping an open communication. And one of the benefits of being in Clubhouse is that you book, um, you get a 15 minute one-on-one -on -one at least one time per month. Uh, with me that's included uh, as a member. And what we do in that is we go over, go over a custom tailored plan specifically for you to talk about, this is where your shortcomings are in your trading. This is what we can improve upon. This is what you should be focused on over the next few days or weeks or whatever the case. And we look for ways to improve your trading. And with this certain individual, they wanted a more systematic approach. And they, uh, you know, they, they took that systematic approach and they, every single day we're, we're having this dialogue where they say, okay, well, is, is this working? Should I keep trying this? Oh, I had two losses, three losses in a row. Should I continue trying this strategy? And, and you know, the answer was yes, keep trying it. And because we're using a risk to reward that's higher than uh, usual, they're seeing success with this strategy. And like I said, I woke up this morning to them hitting maximum daily profit in a combine this morning, which was great, very, very cool. So. Uh, so is my style more, you know, reversal or this or that? I, I've been trading for long enough that I have experience in trading not only a lot of different asset classes, but a lot of different styles. But if you're going to say, you know, what is your style? It's an amalgam of all these different things of auction theory, uh, smart money concepts, uh, market structure, order flow, tape reading. It's a, and it's, it's a whole mix of all of these things. But one of the things that I love the most is is going over specific strategies that work specifically for your type of personality. And that's what I've done with uh with you know anybody in here that does these one-on-ones with me hi reps when do you decide to take a trade i.e do you wait for a certain amount of volume and do you feel that a good amount of volume is only available during news uh, so on that right there um on this trade that we took was a rejection looking for the rejection of the clubhouse level and that to me was a cheap trade because we were in at 63 and we were only risking about eight points on that and we took it from 63 all the way down to i let's see what was my exit there about 53 or so average, let's see, 54 and a half. So, you know, we're, we're risking seven points to make 10 on the first lot there. And that to me was a cheap trade. I mean, it makes sense because the, the bigger trade was down there at 45, if we're exiting at 45, the risk to reward that I'm originally looking at in that trade is risking seven to make about 20. So it's over a two to one. And uh, yeah, so, that's that's the kind of trade that I'm looking for. It's a cheaper trade. We're using confluence of our clubhouse level, whoop, which is this one right here, uh, 65 quarters, which again was a great backstop yesterday. It was it was respected yesterday. It was a really, really nice uh, level there. Hey, Rips, yesterday I hit maximum loss limit at my 150K XFA. Right now I'm up 2.4K. Should I lock it up or should I continue? Suggestions, everyone. Mad, I'm gonna tell you, uh, you need to lock it up. If you're on top step X, hit that lock button immediately. Do not even question it. Do not hesitate. Do not think about it. Lock it up immediately. That's And like Panchua says, he always says that if you ask, it's because you should lock it and there's nothing that reigns true more than that. It, you're going to know it because 
when you're in that pocket, that's not even a question that, that crosses your mind because you're you're so in the pocket. But the moment that you start to get those tingles and jingles where you're like, ah, maybe I should be locking it up right now. That's when you lock it up. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yes, he locked it up. Nice work there. Nice day too, by the way. 2.4K sitting here with a $4,000 balance. Look at you. Unbelievable. Nice work. That is excellent. Straight to payout town. Let's go. Have you taken a payout yet there, Matt, in uh, in XFAs before? I am curious about that. If you don't want to share, that's fine, too. I hate to put you on the spot. So one time. Let's make it two times. What do you say? Can we commit to getting two payouts? Sorry, two. Okay, let's make it three times. <laughs> let's go for three payouts. Uh, <laughs> says, okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's nice. Right, right there. Think, think about that. What What is the other kind of profession that you can have or even the side hustle that you could do where you can click a few buttons in the morning, be up $2,400 and boom, you're, you're done for the day. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's awesome. See, this is, I love you folks. <laughs> I love this. Uh, Ribs, any tips on how to manage a funded account? I can pass the evals pretty easily. However, I lose it all unfunded. If you are, and again, we talked about this sort of at the top of the call. If you are having a lot of trouble uh, keeping the XFA, chances are is that you're rushing the combine stage. And I understand that you do want to get there very, very quickly. Uh, but the thing is, is that the slower that you're taking it on the combine, the easier it's going to be to hold on to that XFA. Because you're, if you're going in every single day and you're punching the gas, you're going to get to that XFA and you're going to be punching the gas and probably lose the account pretty quickly. The idea is, is that you want to just coast into this. If the setups are there, you want to punch the gas. But if they're not, you don't want to be punching the gas. Like, OK, so look at the trade that we took. We took a two lot position on this trade and we didn't take it right away. We took one lot and then we added at the top of the extension because we got a cheaper value and we could bring our average up in this case of a short. Remember, you want to bring your average up on shorts. You want to bring it down on long. So we could have brought our average higher to have a higher short average uh, on this trade. But I'm not barreling into this trade with 15 contracts because uh, I'm, I'm trying to trade these uh, combines like I trade my XFAs like right now. The three uh, combines that I, try, I keep forgetting to copy into four. The balance on these three uh, combines is at 157,000. If I pass these, now I'm going to have 21 past XFAs, uh, 21 past combines on the sidelines. So that's going to tr make trading my XFAs a heck of a lot easier. Um, and, and I'm doing this by design. And I'm doing this also to show that you don't have to be cranking it super hard. I mean, I've been trading these. I got these on April 5th. It's the 9th right now. And they're at $157,000 balance. And that's $2,000 away from passing. Maybe we'll pass these by Friday. Maybe we'll pass them by next week. Uh, we'll have to see. But this is how you should be facing this, this journey is that you're not looking to pass these lickety split. You're looking to coast into the finish line. So when you do get into the XFAs, you're not hammering it as hard as you can. And risk goes both ways. If you're hammering it as hard as you can, it's going to go up as fast as it will go down. So I uh, have several combines that are 10 to 100, 10 to 200 away from passing, waiting until I need a quick pass. Yeah, so the thing is with that, you know, if you're having, if, if you have that mental blockade too, one of the other things I recommend is that if you're sitting there and you're saying, oh shoot, I'm only uh, X amount of dollars from passing. I don't want to blow this thing. Well, either just take the day off, lock it up, or start trading on a different combine or your practice account and just get that your bearing straight. Remind yourself that you can trade, remind yourself that you know what you're doing and just take it easy. And then when you're feeling up to the challenge again, go ahead and take a shot at that at that combine that's close to passing, but don't try to pass it in one trade. I'll often, uh, one of the my best feelings when I'm trading is that if I look over at my balance of my, ex, uh, of my combine and it's sitting there and it's passed and I didn't even notice it, that's usually when I'm the most locked in. If I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, I'm 60 bucks away or $120 away, if I'm like $200 away, it's, it's often hard for me. And I made the mistake like last week or two weeks ago of looking over at my balance. And I think I was streaming here in just the discord. I wasn't on YouTube and we were so close, but it's like, you know, the pressure of passing that definitely even creeps into to my dome <laughs> and where I'm thinking that, you know, I got to try to pass this thing. So try not to pay attention to that figure as much as you can. It's good to have like a high level figure of like, oh, okay, I'm like a thousand bucks away from passing. Like I know that I'm $2,000 away from passing, but I'm certainly not sitting here saying, I need to make $2,000 in this next trade, which is what a lot of people are doing out there because you know you have a 157 balance, you're only $2,000 away. You're thinking, okay, I'm just gonna pass this thing really, really quick. But then you're robbing yourself of the trade experience that you need to have to be successful in the XFA level. <laughs> 
Rips, what are some of your favorite trading books to read? So I talk about these two very often. Markets in Profile, Mind Over Markets. They're by Jim Dalton. They're uh, about auction theory. Uh, Red Book Retail Sales coming out here, waiting for the figure. Uh, 4.2% for the week ending April 6th. And look at that, the market couldn't care less. Do you use an order book of some kind or indicator to see where the liquidity is at or possible see where buyers and sellers are at? Yes, use Bookmap, which is right up above my head there. And by the way, if you want to check it out, here's the uh, the link for Bookmap there. It makes so much sense. Thanks, Dana. Good to see you in here. Redbook moves the market. Yeah, ever so slightly. Uh, we moved the market, let's see, a total of two points in the NQ. <laughs> and I think we probably moved it two ticks in the S&Ps. Uh, look at that price action. One clubhouse level straight to the next. That's Yeah, that's the level that we're shorting off of was the rejection of the clubhouse level there. But yeah, right off those lows, I saw some folks in here who took it 261 all the way up to uh, 319 there, which is really, really nice. Must book, uh, must read is Best Loser Wins from Tom Hogard. Yeah, very, very good. Tom Hogard is, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing book on strategy if you're wanting to look at, uh, sorry, psychology, not strategy. If you're wanting to uh, better your trading psychology, Best Loser Wins is very, very good. What do you get your news updates from? Uh, so here's the free resource that I recommend. This is the free resource that I recommend here. Trading economics, this one is free. There you go. How do you calculate your default position size and do you scale up or trade the same size every day? Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna pick a fixed size and it should be in relation to the size of your account there, Raiden. So if you're trading a 50K account, uh, generally you wanna stick to like one or two lots. You don't really wanna go over that if you're talking, talking about trading in the minis. Um, I do recommend trading the micros on those 50K accounts. The good news is that there's gonna be a full conversion coming soon, so you will be able to trade 50 micros, which is the same as trading five minis. Um, when that comes, it's gonna open the door to a lot of different possibilities, but if you're trading in a 50K account, one to two contracts is plenty, and you should be able to coast in there. Uh, there was a one-on-one -on -one that I did yesterday, and I recommended that that trader used only uh, five micros as a maximum position size, and that was, I think that's a good suggestion for their style of trading. You might be different. I haven't done a one-on-one -on -one with you yet, um, but maybe we can talk about that in the future with you. Um, but it depends, it depends. It depends on the trader, how much risk you manage, what size you're doing. It really just is all dependent on a lot of different factors, but you do wanna be consistent. You don't wanna go in one day trading crazy amount of size and the next day you're reducing that size because that's gonna skew your risk reward parameters. So you really wanna to try to stay consistent. And I recommend getting it somewhere where it's gonna be consistently followed through on that XFA. So if you're trading in the uh, 150K, trading somewhere between one and three lots is gonna get you there because you're gonna get a three lot cap on that, uh, on that XFA, on the 150K level. So I would recommend, you know, one to three lots is probably gonna be where you're best served. Uh, Top Step Group said that conversion wouldn't be coming till late in the year, no. Uh, that is not what I've heard at all, Mason. I've heard it's coming within the next two weeks is uh, likely where it's gonna be. Guess my trial expired, I'm locked out now. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there, Gary. Yes, but right now it's nuts to trade two micros on a 50K. Yeah, um, well, micros, two micros is fine, but two minis uh, might be a little bit much. Micros are not that big of a deal. Micros are, you know, if you're trading a, a micro, it's two bucks a, a point. It's not that much. Yeah, they're saying this month for sure. Yeah, two weeks, two weeks. That's what I'm saying. MP said it will be available for public within a week or so and then should be available out of the gate with the one to 10 ratio scaling. There you go, nice. They want to launch the micro to mini conversion along with the public release of the platform. Thank you for that there. Will they be doing 450 for the 150K accounts? I would, I would not think so. I would think that if anything, they'll probably bring those down to like, I mean, any kind of discount on those is gonna be amazing, right? But I, I would say that not 450, that seems an extreme discount there. I would say maybe like 15 bucks would be a monster discount on those things, 15 bucks each. Is five micros a lot for a 25K account? Um, No, I don't think so. That's half of one mini, so no. But it depends on, what, you know, are you talking about a 25K brokerage account? Or are you talking about a challenge account? I don't know what the drawdown would be for that. Flush a Cito coming or screaming demon higher? Yeah, flip a coin. 
<laughs> there you go. You see NQ reaching 18,400 today. We're not far off. It certainly well could. We could draw some liquidity up there and come right back down. I do think that we'll see a pretty tight session like what we saw yesterday pre-CPI. I don't expect a lot of trading to happen. Um, probably on Top Step TV, I'm probably not going to trade all that much. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I say this often, but I'm probably not going to trade my XFAs today. Probably just wait for CPI. I traded my XFAs uh, for one day last week, one session, and I made 4,200 bucks. And I traded one day in the entire week. That's real money, 4,200 bucks. In a week of trading one day, one session, that's great. And it was like, I think it was like one or two trades. It wasn't even that many trades. MP had said earlier that 150K would be in the $15 range. Hey, there you go, good guess. Ribs market consolidation in the same place. Is it time to go long? Mm, I mean, it's it, we're, we're gonna be lower liquidity until the market open. I think the only liquidity that we're gonna see today is gonna be during that three-year note auction. So we're gonna see liquidity on the open, three-year note auction at 1 p.m., and then the close at 4 p.m. Those are gonna be the three points of liquidity. Maybe Euro close gives us an injection, but I'm not going into today with hungry eyes. I think it's, I, I just don't think that's a good idea. Problem with those deep discounts is Tops of X kind of sucks. <laughs> Sorry, but it's not even close to Ninja. I mean, everybody's different. I, I have a lot of folks that love Tops of X. They actually love it. Dear friend, wow, look at this. 20 bucks from Vibe Training. Thank you so much there. <laughs> Dear friend, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for your hard work, wisdom, and invaluable mentorship. Your guidance has been a beacon of light in my life. Thank you for everything. Give it up for Vibe Trade Channel. That's so sweet. What a great message. That's so nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> That's really nice. Uh, what's the blue and red indicator? Uh, it is the hourly high and low. Uh, you can, I, I mean, it's you can t change it to daily or whatever you want. It's uh, it's just fractal price movements, right? So hourly high, hourly low right there. And you can see this is the new hour because we're at the top of the hour, which by the way, means I'm going to have to go pretty soon. Did we get those likes up, folks? Did we get the likes up? <laughs> the song Hungry Eyes in my head. There you go. Did we get those likes up? Let's see. Let's see. Where are we at on those likes? We are at 741. Come on. I can't make it easier. I say, if we get to 1,200 likes, we'll do a free Top Step Combine giveaway. And by golly, all we needed was 400 more likes. Oh my goodness. Uh, Rips, what is the fundamental view as to why liquidity would inject into indices during a bond auction? Well, because that's gonna dictate where we go in equities, right? So if, uh, if, if the bond auction is really, really strong, that means that more money is gonna, we're gonna see an outflow from equities into fixies. So if we have an outflow of equities, that means equities down. So you wanna see futures short, right? That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm really enjoying Tops of X and I came from Ninja, a little bit of learning curve, but it's gonna be a great competing platform once the kinks are worked out. Yeah, and I mean, think about it. A, 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 if a funding company can own the software and we can dictate what happens with that software as the community, I think it's a win-win for everybody. When I first started trading with a prop firm, I had to use MetaTrader 5. Ooh, I'm sorry. That is not fun. <laughs> MT5 is horrible. Oh, good golly. <laughs> good for you for, for powering through that there. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> MT5 is garbage. Oh, the worst. Uh, I'd try it if they had tick charts. I think they did. Correct me if I'm wrong. Does Top Step X have tick charts or not yet? I'm not sure. Is it there? Am I? It does. Okay, there you go. Who said that? Uh, uh, Jared. Jared, guess what? Happy Tuesday. We got tick charts in Top Step X. There you go. Boom. <laughs> I wish they had tick charts. Well, boom, your wish is granted. <laughs> 500 tick only. Okay, gotcha. 500,000, 2,000, and 5,000. Cool. I used to trade on a 2,000 tick chart in the S&Ps. But I, that was a, a lifetime ago. <laughs> uh, they do, but you can't use custom tick values. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. With like volume charts. I mean, the thing, again, this is, it's gonna get better and better, folks. It's it's only gonna get better because it's driven by the community here. The community is what, what's gonna drive this thing to be amazing. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that. Gotcha, gotcha. Anyone recommend an hourly high-low trading view indicator? I don't know of one on trading view. If, if somebody can help out Roos there. 
Would love to have a 100 tick chart. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Do you recommend NQ for beginners or ES? Um, it depends. If you have no experience at all, the S&P is going to move nice and slow for you. So I would say starting on the S&Ps. But there's also something to be said. Starting your journey in the NQ will make everything else seem like it's in slow motion. But the NQ is extraordinarily difficult in the fact that it moves much quicker. But you can mitigate that risk by trading micros instead of minis. So MNQ would be the instrument you'd want to be trading. Uh, range bars, you can use the Renko chart. It's close to range bars. Thank you for that, Ricky. Russell for beginners. Yeah, Russell moves nice too. Russell has some nice clean moves. Uh, Rips trading view, volatility flex indicator. Thank you for that, N. So check out volatility flex indicator if you folks are looking for an hourly high and hourly low there on your charts. Yeah, you can copy trade on top step X there. Cryogenic says Tops of X has been pretty good. Been trading on an XFA and getting payouts on it. Nice work there, Cryogenic. Very, very nice. All right, folks, we got about uh, another five minutes here together. We are at 900 likes. So if we somehow found 300 likes lickety split, then we could definitely do this giveaway for a free Top Step Combine. But I don't know if we're going to get there in time. What's best to trade for the 50K account? Uh, trade MNQ if you want to trade NQ. If it's too fast for you, trade MES. The, uh, the micros. That's going to serve you a lot better there, in my opinion. Uh, we're in a short, by the way. Good luck to you, Drifa. Looking like we're coming down a little bit. Nice work there. Nice prescient call. Very, very. The moment you said it, it started to roll. So very, very nice. Love to see that. Coming right on down there. NVIDIA is perking up. Microsoft perking up, Google coming down. It's interesting how we've had so much influence by certain stocks on certain days. Like NVIDIA is going up right now. Google's coming down. Google started that downturn in the NQ seemingly. Um, but NVIDIA has had a vice grip on the price action lately. If you look at NQ overlaid on NVIDIA, it's almost the same chart uh, as of recently. Last one hit like button is Rodney. <laughs> I used all my accounts, can't like anymore. <laughs> it's all right. We'll, we'll do a, if we don't do the giveaway today, we'll always do another giveaway tomorrow. I'm still trying to work out whether or not we could do a, a monthly grand prize giveaway in here, which would be a lot of fun, like giving away a laptop. I don't know, what would be some cool prizes? Like giving away a, a, a laptop, I think would be a good grand prize. Can't give away a Lambo. It's a little bit uh, more expensive than a, a laptop. <laughs> live stream ending early today well i have to get over to top step tv because i'm going to be broadcasting over there case of celsius that could be a runner-up prize 100 xfas i can't give away F xfas unfortunately i did ask top step you know because i have past xfas or past combines i did ask if i could give away some of my past combines as xfas they said absolutely not <laughs> they said absolutely no but yeah i think laptop uh laptop would be a good one right trading laptop with the add-on screens they have that uh, Zenbook Duo that uh, has the dual screen uh, built into one thing. I think that would be a cool first prize there. Large monitor like yours. Might be uh, expensive to ship that thing. No, just no, absolutely no. No giveaways? No free stuff? <laughs> Giveaway Rolex, yeah. There you go. Lifetime membership to MC. That's That would be a cool one. Lamborghini Huracan. Big uh, day trader Rick is in the longs there. Good luck to you. Yeah, the Zenbook Duo 2024. Have you folks seen that thing? It's pretty cool. Let me uh, show you here. Look at this thing. Look at that. It's got uh, two screens on it. How cool is that? So you can have uh, Ninja Trader or Top of X down here. You can have Book Map up there. Isn't that cool? It comes built in with two screens and then this keyboard detaches from it. And then when you're not using both screens, the, the keyboard lays on top of that screen. Isn't that cool? Great travel trading setup, right? I don't know why it's zooming in so much, but yeah, what a great travel trading setup. Uh, when we go to Vegas, this is probably what I want to get from my travel trading setup. I've been looking at this between this and a Razer laptop, but this would be a really cool giveaway if we did a giveaway in here. That would be like the grand prize. Could be fun, right? And then whoever uh, whoever wins could... Maybe uh, post them uh, trading on it and we can see what that looks like. It'd be really, really cool. Yesterday was one good idea. Free country giveaway. 
<laughs> we'll give away an entire country. <laughs> What's that called? It's the Zenbook Duo 14, uh, 2024 edition. Uh, let's see here. Right here. Let me send that. Right there. Aces Zenbook Duo. But yeah, I would love to give away one of those. It would be a lot of fun. Yeah, the little screens that pop out. This is like, this is way better than that. It's a touch screen, comes with a stylus too. Oh, you have that, Ramzella. Look at that. You you have the uh, the prior model version. That's cool. Oh, nice. You guys are, guys and gals here are posting your laptop setups. There you go. Very, very cool. Yeah, so not much in the way of setups around this consolidation here. We'll have to see what the uh, market open brings us. But again, folks, do not be trading today with hungry eyes. Uh, trading today with hungry eyes is not going to serve you very well. It's going to be a fool's errand to trade with hungry eyes. We do have CPI coming tomorrow. CPI tomorrow is going to be the big one. That's going to be what's going to dictate the next movement of the market. And we're going to see Fed speakers following that. I think on Thursday we have even more Fed speakers. Yeah, we have three Fed speakers on Thursday. And on Friday we have... Uh, yeah, we have two before the close and they're both voters, Bostic and Daly. So yeah, it's going uh, to be an interesting day today. Uh, I hope you folks enjoyed your time. We had some great time here together. Thank you again to Vibe Trade Channel for the donation. That was really, really, really sweet for you uh, to do that. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, this is, this is going to be it today. We did make $893 copied across three top step combines here. We didn't trade our exophase. I don't think I'm going to trade my exophase until tomorrow. I'll probably hold off until tomorrow on that. Um, but yeah, I really did enjoy our short time here together. You can catch me over on Top Step TV. Let's do a little rips raid over into the Top Step TV channel. Let me go ahead and drop the link here. They only have 1,200 people watching. We have 1,600 people in here. So let's do a, do a rips raid. Go ahead and jam on over there and drop a rips raid in chat. Let them know <laughs> that we're coming in hot. But thank you folks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. It was a lot of fun trading alongside of all of you here. And we'll be back here. If you don't catch me on Top Step TV, I'll see you all bright and early here tomorrow at 8 a.m. sharp. Take care, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day.